single phase induction motors like this one or this one or that one are made to be wired on either 120 volts or 240 volts and most of the newer uh, single phase induction motors have a wiring diagram somewhere sometimes underneath the motor uh, terminal cover other times on the rating plate itself that allows you to uh, hook up the wires in the correct manner and you can see for this one uh, low voltage meaning 120 you would connect 1, 3, and 5 to one wire and you'd connect 2, 4, and 8 to the other wire uh, and you see these are all labeled like there's there's a 2 and there's a 5 and they're all in there uh, for the higher voltage you'd connect 1 to one wire you'd connect 4 and what is that 8 to the other wire and then you'd uh, take 3, 5, and 2 and wire nut them together and uh, or tape them if you wanted to go by the completely by the letter of the law um, and you can also make the motor run backwards based on how you wire this also and this dual voltage configuration goes way back to the beginning of single phase induction motors back when they didn't use capacitors uh, to start but brushes these are repulsion start induction run single phase motors this one's made by Century and you can see it is rated for 104 or 208 volts and you'll note that the amperage is half on the higher voltage and the speed remains the same so uh, you're just reducing the amount of current the thing takes and um, you actually are reducing the voltage drop also because um, if you're a given number of feet from the panel and a given size conductors uh, you're going to get more voltage drop with a lower voltage than you are with a higher voltage that's also why 12 volt landscape lighting systems suck but anyway um, and on these century motors uh, you had four wires coming out of this uh, porcelain insulator and this is wired for 240 or 208 as it was back in the day uh, you would uh, connect the middle ones together the outer ones would be your uh, your supply and for 120 volt operation you would just do supply to these two and supply to these two over here so what you're doing is for 120 volts you're putting the motor windings of which there are two in parallel and for 240 volts you're putting the motor windings in series either way each motor winding gets 120 volts and uh, the century motors are easy enough to figure out he's another here's another one um, this is uh, I believe 1913 and uh, same way wired for 240 of course I had to replace the leads on this the outer two leads had been snipped off and uh, if you can believe it these are 12 gauge wires two of them these are 12 gauge wires two of them what a difference modern insulation makes huh here's another repulsion start motor this is a Wagner on the Arco one central vacuum it's 1140 rpm real slow running motor and um, this one says 110 or 220 if you wire it for 110 it draws 19.8 amps if you wire it for 220 it draws oh hell 9.8 huh oh no 19.6 at 110 9.8 at 220 but it's a little harder to make sense of this they're they're not in any particular order um, well the the theory involved is uh, just as I uh, explained you're putting the windings in either series or parallel so all you have to do is figure out uh, which leads go to one winding and which leads go to the other winding and that's it there's really no wrong way to wire it once you know that because you can't make the thing run backwards unlike a capacitor start motor the rotation is determined by the brushes and their relation to the the windings so we're going to take our uh, cheap shitty multimeter 
or CSMM for short and we have it set to BP continuity mode there we go okay so we'll start with one there's that and oop, hello all right so top left to top right nothing top left to bottom left nothing top left to bottom right ah here we go okay so these two have continuity these two are a winding so we'll put those well actually put them like that now I'm not going to bother checking we're just going to assume that this one does not have continuity with either one of these and we're further going to assume that these two have continuity with each other but we are going to check it there's that and here we are okay so there's another winding so all you would do for 120 volts so this is a winding this needs to go to uh, one line conductor this needs to go to the other line conductor and this is a winding this needs to go to one line conductor either here or there and this needs to go to the other line conductor here or there so you can either go top two to one conductor bottom two to the other or you could go left two to one right two to the other you really can't goof it up and for 240 you've got a line to here this one could either go to there or to there and the other one would be out to your other line and same way uh, you could also take uh, this one to line out to here over to there so basically you can take either put the bottom two together and the top two are your supply or you can put your one side together and the other side is your supply this is nifty because even though nothing's labeled you can't goof it up and uh, if you think you might have goofed it up all you do is turn the motor on for a second you jog the button so to speak and uh, either the thing won't start at all or uh, it'll uh, well I guess you could trip the breaker but <laughs> um, it won't run backwards uh, if you've wired it for 220 and you plugged it into 110 all it'll do is take a real long time to get up to speed before the brushes kick out but nice and easy so um, of course I've got ring terminals on this so to make the connections I like the industrial style where you use a bolt and a nut on each one that would be your uh, your, your series connection and these two go out to your um, power supply Hope this helps all the people out there who are wiring up their 100-year-old repulsion start induction motors. Thanks for watching.